My name is Evan Pycon. I'm an integrated physiologist. So what that means in simple terms is I study how all of the different physiologic systems in the body are integrated with one another. So I have experience working as a physiologist for military special operations, professional sport teams, and I also work in the biotech industry, developing and testing different medical technologies. So anyone that's struggled with chronic knee pain like that, they're probably familiar with this scenario that I'm about to describe. They wake up in the morning and the second they wake up and stand up, they experience a lot of knee pain and it starts to reside as they kind of move around, get their coffee ready, maybe go walk to get breakfast, whatever it is. And then if they sit down at their desk for a few hours, they get up to go get lunch, they experience knee pain and it starts to reside a little bit as they go about their day. The reason for that is they're not getting enough blood to that tissue. So the tissue is cold and it's what we call hypothermic um, when we're dealing with athletes or we're working in a medical context. So if I were to take a thermal camera and I were to look at the tissues on that side of their body, we would see that they have these big blue spots, which represent cold regions. We call them islands of hypothermia. And if we were to look at their normal side, you wouldn't see that. You would see heat radiating through the tissue. And that heat radiating through the tissue is caused by an optimal amount of blood moving through it. So what's happening on that side that they've had this chronic knee pain is they have what's called impaired perfusion. Not enough blood is getting into that tissue. And one of the reasons for that, we could think about it in terms of plumbing, their plumbing is not sufficient. So it could be that they have vasoconstriction, their arteries that supply the blood to the tissues, they're compressed. I almost think about it like, I think of like plumbing in a house. So imagine you have these tiny little pipes in your house and you want to take a nice hot shower and you go and turn the shower on, no water's coming out because the pipes are so small that you can't supply the water to the faucet that you want to. Well, one way to do that would be to increase the diameter of the pipe to allow more water to flow through. And we actually see something similar in our body when we've had these chronic knee injuries we actually create what's called systemic vasoconstriction. So if you imagine your arteries and your capillaries that supply the blood to the tissue, they're actually shrunken down and compressed. So one of the things that red light therapy could do is it causes a certain molecule to come off of the hemoglobin that is in our red blood cell. And that molecule actually opens up our blood vessels so it's literally increasing the size of those pipes, the arteries and capillaries that supply blood and oxygen to a muscle tissue. And it helps restore that blood flow in a much more effective way than other therapies or nutraceuticals that someone might take to try and do that would. This is just a fact of biology. This isn't controversial in any way whatsoever. And in fact, a lot of medical technologies are based off of this. So for example, when you go to the doctor's office and you put on a pulse oximeter and they tell you how much oxygen is in your arterial blood, that's the amount of oxygen that gets to your brain, your heart, your pulmonary system. It's a very important measurement. The reason that that measurement works is it uses pulsing light to see how much oxygen that your hemoglobin is carrying in your arteries. If we want to look at another measurement that's also used in medicine, which is tissue oxygen saturation, you can put a device like this on your muscle tissue and it shines red light in and that red light reacts with the hemoglobin and myoglobin and it gets reflected back into the sensor. That's used to see how much oxygen is in the microvasculature of your tissues. So these are all very common tools that are used in medicine. They're used in high performance sports. They're used in research labs across the world. And they're all based on the same technology as photobiomodulation therapy, which is what the Revive Knee Plus device uses. I think if someone's interested in using the device and they get a Revive Knee Plus device, what they really have to do to make sure they get the optimal progress is find a routine that they could stick to and use it consistently. So even if it's five, 10 minutes every day while they drink their coffee in the morning or when they watch TV at night, I would just make sure that they're using it consistently because you can have the best knee therapy in the world. You could work with the best physio in the world. And if you don't actually take advantage of the product that you have in your hands or the service that's offered to you, it's not going to work. And a lot of times when you see people 
work with a physio or get a new product that should help accelerate recovery and people don't get the results they want, it's really because they're not using these things consistently enough to see progress. So I think that's the key that anyone, anyone using this device needs to consider. And it sounds so silly and it sounds so simple, but you wouldn't believe how often people invest in these things and they just don't use them enough. And then they complain that they're not getting the proper effect. Mm-hmm.